We would like to now turn our attention to Bill Horvath, William Horvath, and we'll have inductions by three individuals. Uh, Don Last will begin with that. He's an emeritus professor of the College of Natural Resources, a uh, good friend of all of ours. Um, secondly, we'll have Bill Berry, um, a writer, a journalist, and for many years he helped us with the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame biographies. He's a good friend of, of Bill as well. And uh, I'm not sure if anyone else is going to mention it, but uh, uh, an accomplished author in his own right, uh, Bill has just uh, published a new book on basically the conservation story and DDT in Wisconsin. So thank you, Bill, for that effort. And lastly, we'll have Ron Zimmerman, who is the director of Seneca Reserve, who has worked closely with Bill in um, uh, many ways forming this partnership that has worked so well for 30 years. So with that, Don, please, please say your uh, comments. Good morning, and thank you, Joe. I want to extend my congratulations to Cliff Germain and to uh, Jay Reed as inductees, but we'll focus my comments this morning on the distinguished gentleman in the first row here, Mr. Bill Horvath. <clears throat> um, I'm familiar with the good works of most of the folks that have been inducted into the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame over the years, but I'm indeed especially proud to be able to say a few words today on behalf of Bill one of our three newest inductees. I'm going to do so chiefly from the perspective of someone else that's worked in the soil and water conservation field. While I knew a bill a few years earlier, I got to know him kind of up close and personal starting in 1976 because Bill then was my neighbor and also my city of Stevens Point alderman. And a bit later he also was my representative in the Wisconsin Assembly. So I've had more than a few years to observe and to judge this man and especially his work. Given this fact, I want you to know that Bill Horvath is the real deal and therefore is a most worthy uh, 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 inductee into the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. I've got three examples that I want to share in that regard. First, Bill advised the directors of county soil and water conservation districts, as did I, but Bill did it on a national scale versus my activities in only a few dozen Wisconsin counties. Bill's message then and over the years and his advice and his leadership regarding wise use and management of the landscape uh, were delivered to you know, a few numbers here, 3,000 conservation districts across the country tens of thousands of leaders of those conservation districts, and to the hundreds of thousands of private landowners of farmland, of forest land, range land, from east coast to west coast in this country. You might know that 60% of the land in our great nation is privately owned. Thus, such lands are largely beyond the reach of state DNRs, the U.S. Forest Service, the National Park Service, and similar agencies who manage our public lands. The National Association of Conservation Districts, or NACD, with Bill Horvath as a key staffer for so many years, specifically reached out with effective programs intended to encourage, and perhaps more importantly, to enable private landowners to become positive stewards of the soil, the water, the flora, and the fauna under their control. It's possible that uses of more than one billion with a B, acres of private land nationally, has been influenced by NACD outreach efforts during the years that Bill Horvath provided exceptional leadership within that organization. As someone who has attended several annual meetings of NACD where I witnessed Bill in action, I can assure you that his advice and his wisdom have greatly influenced how, where, and when those conservation district officials he addressed in turn, when they got back to their communities, interacted with their local landowners. As I said before, at the national level, Bill's work, uh, work is the real deal. Secondly, a second window into Bill's leadership, this time at the state level. <clears throat> While he was state representative, Bill worked, with, or worked his brand of magic on the likes of Politico's Tommy Thompson and Tony Earle and other elected officials of different political stripes. Bill's leadership and finesse, I might add, 
led directly to the enactment of important changes to Wisconsin state law governing trespass rules on private lands. Likewise, he helped craft an innovative addition to state law that encourages landowners to allow people to use their private property while those people are hiking or biking or engaging in many of the other outdoor activities that you and I enjoy. This is significant because it limits, the law limits the liability of the landowner in the event of an accident to someone visiting, using, and recreating on the land. Around the table for the signing of the law of these two bills were both Democrats and Republicans, both farm and environmental interest group members, who on another day or with another struggle or with another issue might have operated as adversaries. Bill Horvath found the common ground on which all interested parties could stand, thus directly resulting in laws that have benefited all of us in this audience and everyone else across the state. This is the reason number two, I suggest, that we recognize Bill as the real deal in the field of conservation here in our state of Wisconsin. But just maybe, and I, maybe I admire and praise Bill today most for his long-term efforts he has invested in bettering the land he owns in Shano County. Clearly he has never been afraid to put into practice what he has preached so long. By getting down on his hands and knees and lovingly improving his property inch by inch, and in so doing, implementing a conservation action plan, not unlike what he, for so many years, prescribed for other private landowners nationwide. Like I've said, whether at the local, the state, or the national level of conservation activity, Bill Horvath indeed is the real deal. Thus, let me conclude by urging all of you to join me and Bill Berry and Ron Zimmerman in saluting and congratulating Mr. Bill Horvath, a most worthy inductee into the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. Thank you. I'm going to ignore that clock there. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I'm Bill Berry. I have had the pleasure to work with my dear friend Bill Horvath on a number of conservation initiatives uh, in the nation and right here at home. And uh, it's a tremendous honor to be here with all of you and all the inductees and family members, uh, and especially Bill and, and his family. And so, um, you know, I have to tell you though that I've been, I've been very nervous about this day for a long time because we're talking about a man who uh, uh, values precision. For instance, he has a deer stand where for 31 years he's recorded just about every minute of activity, uh, uh, which ends up being a fabulous phenological record. Um, but he can tell you every the, the temperature, the time, the day uh, of every deer he's seen, no, well, not even shot, uh, and a whole lot of other things. Uh, he's also a man who's kept every bridge score that he's ever had uh, <laughs> from his bridge club. Uh, and he tells me that he does that because he wants to know whether he came in first or second for the year. Uh, he's also a man who's kept every golf score that he's ever had, uh, so that he can tell his wife that, that uh, he beat her this year. Uh, so this is pretty, he's going to find some errors in my presentation, uh, and uh, I'm going to do my best uh, to, to do him honor, though. Um, see that quote up there, too many people for the resources? Uh, Bill really believes that. You know, a lot of people believe it, but a lot of people just say it. Bill didn't just say it. When he lived in the 12th Ward here in Stevens Point, he went door to door to his male neighbors to tell them to have a vasectomy after they had their second kid. Um, and so, when Don said he's the real deal, he, you know, he is the real deal. Um, so, um, vasectomies in the 12th Ward in a heavily Catholic town, I might add. Um, so, Ron's going to tell you about Bill's important activities with the Conservation Hall. Um, and how fitting it is that today we're, we're here with him. He served as executive secretary for 21 years, um, and uh, it's a great honor, like I said. So there's a six-year-old boy in the town of Navarino, a little red dot on that map in Shawano County. Um, he's a pretty cute little fellow. Um, that's, that's about the age where Bill saw uh, one of his favorite trout schemes uh, destroyed by a drag line, and that's when he became a conservationist at age six. Something else happened to Bill when he was a boy, about nine years old, his parents divorced. 
He was the second of five kids, and he left home at age nine to work for a nearby dairy farmer because there just wasn't enough to go around at home. Bill once described his feeling about having to walk away from his home that day. He told me it felt like a giant rubber band was trying to pull me back, but he kept walking. Later, a teacher saw value in this young guy and uh, gave him a catalog for Central State College, which is now here at Stevens Point. Bill ended up here, worked full time, and earned a double major in English and Conservation. He also did one very intelligent thing in those days. He courted a local girl named Nancy Damro. Um, at first, I'm told she didn't have a whole lot of interest in him, uh, but he kind of grew on her. They married and raised two children. Well, Nancy did most of that. Um, but today, I think you could call them the best of friends. And they're two wonderful people, and it's an honor to know them. Um, it's also said a bill that you always know where we stand, where he stands, and I can tell you, you also know where Nancy stands all the time, too. <laughs> um, so, you know, Don noted a number of Bill's accomplishments. Uh, um, I would add a few on the local level, um, serving on the common council here. Um, uh, he, he had a, um, there's the graduate of uh, Natural Resources, the first uh, Natural Resources grad to be inducted into the Conservation Hall of Fame. It's amazing when you think of how many great people the College of Natural Resources has turned out. Um, so what a great deal that was. Um, back to Bill's local activities, that's uh, Piffner Pioneer Park, uh, where thousands of people gather at Stevens Point uh, to enjoy the beautiful, cleaned up Wisconsin River. Uh, Bill spearheaded a committee which uh, recommended the development of that uh, the park system, linking two parks with a three-quarter acre trail. And I might add that was the first real link of what has become the 26-mile Green Circle Trail in Stevens Point. It, it really served as the anchor, the de facto anchor of that trail. Um, and uh, as, as you can see there, this is the Jazz Festival in September. Thousands of people flock to that park year-round, uh, uh, either to walk in solitude or to join their friends and neighbors in, in celebrations. Uh, Bill was also an advocate of, of, of uh, really uh, spearheaded the effort to organize this city's uh, urban tree program. Matter of fact, uh, some of his colleagues, one of his colleagues on the Common Council called, called him a communist once for proposing that the city plant up all of our trees. Um, he also um, was a strong advocate of urban, uh, urban land use. So. so I was a newspaper guy in those days, and Bill was an all men, and I always admired Bill because he asked the tough questions at meetings that I would have had to ask afterwards. Um, <laughs> years later, he told me, well, I already knew the answers to those questions. I just wanted them to say them in public. So um, that was my friend Bill Horvath doing that work. Um, on to, on to the state, as Don said, Bill served as a, as a state legislator from Stevens Point. Um, he mentioned the Berry Picker Law, which is probably the most famous, uh, one of the more famous pieces of conservation legislation that Bill worked on. Uh, he also spearheaded efforts to pass the original managed forest law in Wisconsin. Um, MFL is a landowner incentive program that encourages sustainable forestry. And I think uh, I recently read that there's more than 2 million MFL acres in Wisconsin right now. Bill also served on numerous state com committees that dealt with conservation, and he's involved to this day. He's a member of the state's new deer management assistance program. Uh, so, uh, you know, local, state, and, and national. Don, Don really summed up with great numbers the impact Bill has had all across the country on conservation. You know, uh, Cliff worked in the area of uh, natural areas preservation, difficult work, challenging. Uh, uh, Bill worked primarily in the area of private lands conservation. And uh, if you ever tried to, to, I mean, every farmer in America, I think, has a different view about how to do things. Um, and I, I think uh, farmers, private forestry landowners, uh, much of the work of private lands conservation is really the sort of science of human relationships. And Bill was an expert at that. He's gotten around, I'm telling you. He uh, left Stevens Point, received the position, uh, one is back, got his uh, his uh, master's degree at the University of Michigan, and then took a regional position with the Pennsylvania Soil and Water Agency. Pretty soon, the Maryland folks, the Maryland uh, State Soil and Water Conservation Agency courted him after just a few months, actually. 
He was 25 years old at the time. He had a, head of a state uh, agency uh, that oversaw the work of hundreds of, uh, or dozens of conservation districts. Um, soon he was offered this, the same job here in Wisconsin, the Soil Water Conservation Board. Um, he was an advocate all the way through this for watershed management. I'll give you one example here in Wisconsin. When Bill, Bill came here, the board uh, was approving all applications uh, for public assistance uh, for watershed management that was administered by the Soil Conservation Service, what we know today as NRCS. Um, the program became, over, year, over the years, a huge channelization effort. Um, Bill didn't like that. He created a bio, an agency biology team of state and federal agencies to assess the damage that these projects could do and pretty much put a stop to them. Um, he, was a good ex, he was an expert at leading from behind, and there's an example of how he did that. Um, just a few years after that, the NACD came knocking. Um, Bill said yes, he would be their regional, north central regional director if he could establish and keep his office in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. So Bill and Nancy came home. Well, sort of. Bill was gone half the time. Uh, and, and it was not for fun. He was traveling all the country, or all around the country, doing private lands conservation work. You know, Don, Don really summarized it well, his work as director of the North Central Region of NACD, its policy center, uh, and its forestry programs over the years. Everyone in private lands conservation knew Bill, from secretaries of agriculture, through the NRCS and Forest Service chiefs, to the regular folks on conservation district boards all across this country. And Bill treated them all the same. As a matter of fact, he was invited in the early 1990s to a White House conference on climate change. He turned them down. How come? He had an NECD meeting that he needed to attend and conservation districts were his, his, uh, his first allegiance was to conservation districts. This kind of stuff went on for 40 years. Uh, name the natural resources concern, and Bill probably had something to do with trying to fix it. He was also a rainmaker. He secured something like $25 million in federal, state, and private grants to help the work of NACD and conservation districts. That's a lot of money, but you know what? We're paupers in this conservation business. That $25 million is roughly the price of an Apache helicopter. And frankly, Bill knows this better than anybody, often in Washington, D.C., uh, we folks who deal with conservation are sort of at the back of the line. And so our work is even that much harder. And to secure that amount of money for that kind of work is, is really an immense accomplishment. A couple examples of that. Uh, when the EPA was established in the early 1970s, uh, the farming community and NACD uh, didn't want to have much to do with the agency. Uh, that didn't matter to Bill Horvath. He went over to that region headquarters in Chicago and made connections. And by, by, the end he, by the time he had done that, he had secured uh, something like $15 million in grants from EPA to sort of educate people about non-point pollution control. Um, they were go, and, he, and one of the grants he got uh, um, allowed them, the NACD, to make two 28-minute films uh, on, on, on water quality in the non-point area. Uh, they, these were viewed by more than a million people. And one of them received a National Film, National Film Award. Bill directed the only ever only national uh, inventory of recreational facilities on lands across the country. The then Bureau of Outdoor Recreation needed that information to administer the LawCon program, which was making grants to states uh, for the purchase and development of recreational land. In the early years of this century, Actually, after he retired from NACD, like a day later, he came back to work as a contractor um, to head the forestry program. Uh, this is a chance when I had a great opportunity to work with Bill personally. What he did was convince the U.S. Forest Service and the Department of Interior to provide a large grant to NACD to help conservation districts uh, promote uh, the concepts of forest health and uh, woody biomass utilization. NACD was a leader in this effort. Uh, there's Bill out there, way up in Trinity County, California, working with some fellow conservationists. Um, there's an example of a managed forest uh, uh, in which uh, the understory has been trimmed and removed uh, to sort of replicate fire in an effort to prevent wildfire. Bill and I went all over the country doing this together, and it's some of my fondest memories. 
So, yeah, you remember that photo of the little boy uh, there who walked away from his farm after his family had difficulties. Um, so years later, um, Bill acquired that same property, as Don made reference to. So that's that home farm. That's the home farm that Bill acquired. He undertook a model restoration project, established Wisconsin's first federal stewardship uh, forest, planted thousands of trees, restored wetlands, establishing prairies, and created uh, wildlife habitat. Uh, so, you know, he, he once again built put his uh, money where his mouth was, really. And Bill Horvath had to leave his home one day as a little boy, but years later he returned. He did so much. So there's a picture of Bill of one of the deer. He could tell you the exact moment, the temperature, the day that, uh, that he shot that deer. So I'm not even going to try. Um, and there's a picture of Bill's grandson, Bobby, who's in the crowd with other family members here, when Bobby shot his first turkey on that land. Um, so, yes, uh, Bill came back to his home. Uh, but before he did, he did so much other stuff, too. I'm so grateful to be here on his behalf. Thank you, Bill. Well, it's an honor to speak on behalf of Bill's induction. Mark Twain said pretty well. He said, uh, the two most important days in our life are the day we're born and the day we find out why. <laughs> well, Bill's one of those really fortunate people who knew very early on what his mission in life was going to be. It was conservation. Bill was born shy, but he soon got over it. Anybody knows and knows that. He, by his own admission, was not a real academic star when he went to the university here. Uh, as an undergraduate, uh, he was a standout, though. Uh, he wasn't afraid of raising his hand to ask questions. That's kind of a theme throughout his life. He always politely challenged his instructors, his teachers. And any of you who teach, know how nice it is to have a student like that in your class. Somebody who really wants to know the answers because they want to use those, that information. They want to take it with them out into the world. And he wasn't the kind of kid that was worried about what the other students uh, thought when he would uh, keep asking questions in class. Bill's one of those rare birds that uh, likes to look at things and not see small commonplace things, but maybe make big connections see the big picture. He doesn't think small, and I've noticed that he doesn't let small-minded people hold him back. He thinks big. He shoots for the stars. It's amazing how much can be accomplished if we don't worry about who gets the credit. It's already been stated that uh, Dan Trainer had the idea, the nucleus of a thought for the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. Bill is always quick to give credit to Dan Trainer as that, that person who, who came up with that idea. But Dan was a pretty savvy character. Those of you who, who know him knew that he would often set many of us up for things. And I'm pretty sure that the reason that he shared that idea, almost exclusively at first with Bill, was because he knew was, Bill was the perfect guy to really think big and to carry out that idea to its logical conclusion. One of the first developmental meetings that we had was in a half-finished visitor center over in the Shmeekly Reserve. Bill had invited some really important people from all kinds of conservation organizations that, frankly, I hadn't even heard of. And so all these people came from all walks of life, some very distinguished people, and it was kind of a humble little place at that time because they had to sit amid cobweb, cobwebs and sawdust on the chairs. I was appalled. But Bill had invited all these important people because he thought big. Mr. Horvath was the cement that held the whole group together, and I might add, for many years. As I remember, it was his idea that we needed a Board of Governors, as he put it, to add credibility to our candidate nomination selection process. And again, he wasn't shy. He went out and asked some of the most important people in conservation in the state of Wisconsin to serve on that Board of Governors. Bill 
Horvath is a no-nonsense, get-her-done kind of guy. I never knew when I was going to find him uh, right outside the visitor center, maybe pounding on a nail that had come up on the uh, Hall of Fame uh, deck right outside the, uh, the exhibit hall, or when he and his wife Nancy were, were wallpapering the Hall of Fame gallery themselves because we needed to get it done, or when he bought a dozen mammal pelts that we needed in the uh, conservation exhibits at the Hall of Fame. He bought them himself on his own pocket, unasked. Or maybe just finding the walnut for the plaques that we needed to have made for the next induction ceremony. Bill is a hands-on kind of person. He was there when we needed to get that first uh, Stevens Point Motel tax to build the addition that became the Conservation Hall of Fame addition at the Smithfield Reserve. In fact, he was the individual that took the responsibility for the ownership of the property when the state gave it away for two years so that we could build it without all of the red tape and bureaucracy that was required to build a state building. I've already stated that Bill had the uncanny ability to see connections, to see the big meaningful ideas. You get a sense of that if you ever eavesdrop on Bill when he's giving a tour of the Conservation Hall of Fame, the galleries, the plaques on the wall. Now, they're just plaques on the wall with some names and quotations, but if you listen to Bill, Stand around the corner where you can't, can't see yet. You'll hear him start to paint pictures. He not only tells the story of the individual contributions of every individual in the Hall of Fame, but he begins, begins to weave them together into a tapestry that's a, a meaningful history of conservation, not only in the state of Wisconsin, but linking the history of the state of Wisconsin to the entire nation. If Dr. Yambert one of Bill's mentoring professors here, uh, could hear him lead one of those walks, be pretty proud of how Bill put everything together over the years. Yes, it's amazing when you don't worry about who gets the credit. Bill spends the force behind all those conservation efforts you've heard, some of them nationally important. Uh, he put the work, the sweat, the tears, all those hours into making it possible for maybe a governor to grab the ceremonial pen and sign a bill, for a chancellor or a mayor to cut a ribbon on a project, or to make a big speech, but make no mistake, Bill was that guy that made sure things got done. He was often in the background, behind the scenes, but it was Bill that often had done most of the work. I've been here since the beginning. I've witnessed the entire creation and growth of the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. And I want you to know that it's Bill's guidance and hard work more than anything else that all of them have noticed, but that's what really built the concept of the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. Bill's been off the unsung innovator and the driving force behind the concept, and Bill is greatly deserving of recognition today. Thank you. Thank you, Don, uh, Bill, and Ron for those great tributes to, as I agree, a greatly deserving person and good friend of all of ours. Um, at this point, I'd like uh, Katrina Shanklin to return to the stage and present the uh, legislative tribute. Well, what an honor it is to present this legislative citation to Bill Horvath. Know you by his presence, whereas William Horvath was born in 1938, received a degree in conservation from the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point in 1961, and went on to pursue a master's degree from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. And whereas, William went on to work for the Pennsylvania Soil and Water Conservation Department before becoming the director of the Maryland State Soil and Water Conservation Agency, and years later accepted a position as director of the Soil and Water Conservation Board in Wisconsin. And whereas, William was hired as the first Midwest Regional Director by the National Association of Conservation Districts in 1972, and later served as the Interim Director 
of the Conservation Information Technology Center, returning after his retirement in 2002 to direct the NACD's forestry program's office until retiring again in 2005, and whereas William was elected to the City of Stevens Point Common Council in 1975, where he served a total of 10 years, including one term as City Council President, and was also elected in 1983 to the Wisconsin State Assembly, and whereas William was the founder of the Hall of Fame Foundation to aid the Conservation Hall of Fame in recognizing individuals who have made tremendous contributions to conservation, serving as its Executive Secretary for 21 years, and whereas William led the conservation districts into a collaboration with the Environmental Protection Agency, which gave support for many watershed management demonstration projects, and through his efforts with NACD obtained grants of more than $15 million to place thousands of acres under good watershed management. And whereas, William Horvath is a 2014 inductee to the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. Now, therefore, Senator Julie Lassa and Representative Katrina Shanklin do hereby honor William Horvath for his lifelong leadership and efforts to protect and restore waterways and unique natural areas, and for his remarkable contributions to the advancement of soil and water conservation. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. Uh, I think we can change the order a little bit. We're going to have Bill come up and he can actually stand by and we'll unveil the wall and plaque and he will be up here then for your presentation. Uh, as we unveil this wall and plaque, I realized uh, Bill, uh, Bill Berry kind of summed it up really well as well as Ron that this man is a stickler for detail. Uh, I'm a little hesitant to unveil this plaque for reasons you can imagine. Uh, just three or four days ago, I called Bill and said, well, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I haven't seen you for a while. Are you prepared to make some comments? He said, certainly I am. And then he launched into a lot of suggestions. And one was, and where did you get the walnut for those plaques this year? So I, I, I realized he may have a fine-toothed eye as he, he looks at this. And I'm going to just offer my jackknife. If you don't like it, you can carve your own <laughs> out of some of the wellness on your farm. Okay? So come on up, though, and be careful of those steps. He gets a roadblock, he goes right around it. And uh, when he said it about, 
we couldn't find a way to build that addition onto the building. And so we worked out a deal with the Board of Regents to subtract enough land from Sensei University's land uh, to build the building so we didn't have to go through the state architecture, which is hellish to go through, as Ron would say. So Ron did that. And so we, we got the building addition put out. So Ron, I want to thank you for, for uh, working with you, too. The last person I want to thank is I want to thank my wife, Nancy. I have had the privilege of reading most of the biographies of the inductees over the years, and I've always enjoyed them because you get the detail and it can't be given here or whatever about, pe about people. But one thing that's never said, those people spend hours and hours and days and days and years doing all the things they wanted to do, and the reason they could do that is because they had a spouse back home taking care of things uh, that they should have been taken care of. And I haven't been married to one like that for 52 years. Nancy has never complained about me running off in a political thing or, and I was gone sometimes 120 days out of the year someplace in the United States. And it was, we didn't even say goodbye. That it got, it got so common fact. And she just asked me, when are you going to be home? I said, well, maybe home Thursday. And that's about, about when we left it. But something always happened. But she always took care of the kids and, Made sure they got to school and Sunday school and the groceries on the, and the, got fed and the car uh, tanks and the, the gasoline and the, and the cars and things of that nature. So Nancy, and from all of this audience, I want to say thanks again for all your good help and allowing me to do this. But she always left me with one thing, and that's true today. And don't forget to take the garbage out tomorrow's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> thanks again for this great honor.